Now, the studies carried out in music as heritage presented in underground as well as mainstream genres have so far shown two main formats. Place associations, of course, where places become part of a specific cultural heritage because they are associated either with musicians or with a music genre. And historical association, musicians engage with thematics that are directly connected to their very own personal historical background and heritage to vent their own personal philosophies, agendas, to teach, educate uh, the wider public or simply to entertain. These two formats are perhaps uh, the more easily recognisable and understandable and from the music's point of view they can be considered passive formats. In both cases, music through either place association or historical association is made or allowed to be part of a cultural heritage. There is, however, another format which, from a music's point of view, and differently from the others, can be uh, considered active, and that is heritage as music, which can be summarised in the historical and archaeological approach, for example, sounds of traditional instruments or sounds of monuments, or uh, in the philosophical and the intuitive approach, represented mainly by sounds of memory. The first two points are part of a more traditional set of studies and generally fall under the archaeomusicology or archaeoacoustic categories. To be able to explain the last point, however, the philosophical and intuitive approach, we must take a step or two back in time and become very philosophical. A modern concept of heritage and in specific cultural heritage as the legacy or tangible and intangible cultural attributes of a group or society handed down from the past, sounds somewhat, somewhat elaborate. However, if one strips it down to its very uh, core, one will discover that heritage is very simply something handed down from the past, the evidence of the past. What defines the presence of the past is memory. If you Google memory, you will have a very long Wikipedia entry on the neurological explanation of the act of remembering. But in historical and philosophical terms, not only was memory one of the five elements of rhetoric, therefore the physical act of remembering, memory was also the act of handing down historical traditions through knowledge and understanding. From Aristotle to Thomas Aquinas, memory had not only been a personal inner function, but it also had a social relevance. Italian medievalist, uh, medieval sorry, philosopher Bon Compagno da Signa expressed in a few sentences the essence of memory in his famous Rhetorica Novissima of 1235. Memory is the honourable and admirable gift given by nature to mankind to be able to recall the past, embrace the present and contemplate the future through its similarity with things of the past. Memory was a sort of moral, ethical and spiritual compass through which an individual could function and self-understand within a social group, and the social group could function and self-identify within itself and in relation to other groups and societies. Memory as knowledge was within as much as without. This is a concept that differs very much from our own perception of memory. In our Western modern world, we learn from a very early age that memory personal collective is the opposite of real knowledge, which is outside. However, new studies on cognition are slowly but surely proving that perhaps the classical and medieval perception was more correct than ours. In classical and medieval terms, memory was stored in images because thought and knowledge were believed to occur in visual forms. Hence the idea that collective memory was stored in physical pictures, monuments and so on. The connection between memory and images is the one we also tend to find easier to understand because it is the more direct. But if you stand still and silent for a little while, we see how this connection is truly not the only one because memory has a visual and sensual side all, as all the senses can be stimulated to awake memory. For is it not the taste of a cake which started Prost's search for remembering of? of things past. This quote is at the core of the whole argument because if you truly look inside you in your own personal memory, you will know that sounds hold as much memory as images. But this connection, being perhaps less familiar or less obvious, needs examples. There are of course a few historical examples, but because of time and space, 
This paper will only deal with modern important examples of this connection, memory, knowledge, music, place, and of the idea of heritage as music. Let's talk about Vadruna. Vadruna is not really just a band. It is at the same time a research project and a spiritual journey envisioned and brought to life by Norwegian musician Aina Selvig. Vadruna, as described by its own founder, is a project dedicated to creating musical renditions of Norse culture and esoteric traditions, using replicas of ancient and historical instruments accompanied and enhanced by the natural sounds of the elements. Vadruna's mythological cosmology, intended here as the inner theory describing the natural order of Vadruna's universe, its origin, its history and evolution, is complex, multifaceted and deep. A perfectly balanced mixture of natural intuition, self-exploration and esoteric and academic research. Vadruna was and still is for founder Aina Selvig a spiritual calling that needed to be answered. The influence of his cultural heritage, the attractive power of almost forgotten historical traditions including the Norse esoteric beliefs and the lack of legitimate studies of such traditions outside of a dry and stagnant academic sphere or outside of an over-embellished but poorly researched New Age sphere, made it necessary for him to study and engage with these traditions directly from the primary sources. In Aina's own words, Padruna searched in the scattered ruins of Norse history and used the ruins as a tool to understand and evoke the depths of the old Nordic pagan beliefs. Musically, the main focus is on recreating the Norse cultic musical language and the near-forgotten arts of Galder and Cider, as well as the daily acts of, of life. This is, a mix, this is mixed with impulses from Norwegian Nordic folk music and music from other indigenous cultures. Their first three albums are part of, of a trilogy called Runaliot, The Sound of Runes, dedicated to the proto-Norse runes of the Elder Futark. The first album, Gap Var Ginunga, came out in 2009. It took seven years to be made, during this time, each rune has been engaged within its own premises. Historical instruments have been used, together with recordings carried out in outdoor locations relevant to each rune, and even specific dates of the ritual year connected to the runes were observed for recording. The first album set the bar extremely high and immediately identified Vadruna as something above and beyond a music band. The response was almost immediate, so much so that for the first, their first live show, they were invited to perform where no other band ever performed before, and this is the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo. The three albums of the trilogy represent the ancient cyclical perception of time, memory and knowledge. This perception, which was replaced by the uh, linear thinking of Christian and Cartesian traditions, allows man to or human beings, really, to rediscover and reactivate connections with nature, with each other, and with something bigger, more powerful, and all-encompassing. Vajuna's original goal of creating musical renditions of Norse culture and esoteric traditions was fully achieved and surpassed immediately with the first album. They became the voice and sound of the modern perception of what Norse original music should sound, so much so that in 2012, Selvig was contacted by the producer of the famous program The Vikings, wanting to use Vadruna's music as Norse traditional music in their program. This worked so well that in the following years, Selvig was asked to produce music for, for the program, so only for the program, and this is him talking about it. My name is Aina Sali. I supply a lot of the historical instrumentation for the history of Vikings. So this is a, in, in my native tongue, we would say good cool. That basically means a uh, good word. This word in particular, we, we use on the show, and with its moaning sore, moaning tone, it is very expressive and, and it is perfect for morning the day. This is the oldest old instrument we have in, in Scandinavia. It's called um, Antokarpa. 
Tango means uh, horse hair. And it, it has that name because the strings are made of horse hair. <clears throat> it is amazing how, how much you can get out of, of such a limited instrument in, in that way. The limitation actually sharpens me and creative wise. This is a lira, a lyre. It's basically a, a, a small harp. And I've used this this instrument uh, quite a bit on, on, on the soundtrack work I've done, and I've also played it on, on the show. So there you have it. Vadruna's assumed Viking mess was thus created and it was embraced by fans and media, less so by the band. In 2014, Aina Selvig was commissioned by the Norwegian government to create a musical composition in collaboration with Eva Bjornsson of Enslaved to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Norway's constitution. The result was Skuxia. This became a concept album which, quote, not only defies era and genre, but holds values at the core of metal music and humanity, and uses the past to illuminate what is missing in the present. In 2017, a follow-up to Skuxia was created. Hookxia became a concept album dedicated to, and inspired by, Norwegian coastal culture and Norse history. It was originally commissioned by and performed at Bergen International Festival. These two projects, specifically dedicated to Norwegian cultural heritage and Vadruna's work, which also includes Aina's solo project dedicated to the study of the Old Norse skaldic poetry, have defined Vadruna as the example par excellence of the idea of music as heritage, with all the specific associations and different approaches to history or historical topic topics discussed at the beginning of this paper. We have place association. Bergen and its coastal area is now recognized not only as Aina Selvig's place of birth, but it is more broadly speaking associated to his past and to what made him and Vadruna. And it is part of a very unique type of international music tourism, which includes also other Norwegian locations and historical monuments connected to Vadruna's live shows. We have the historical association. Vadruna not only engaged fully with thematics that are connected to their past and represent Norwegian heritage, they also have become the official narrators of Norwegian ancient history, official because recognized as such by the Norwegian government and the Norwegian people. But Vadruna represents much more. At a deeper level, and differently from the majority of other music projects, they are the embodiment of a sort of spiritual heritage. Their music is no longer just a mere rendition of Norse culture and esoteric traditions, and they are no longer just mere narrators. They have become the medium through which heritage is music, their unique way to engage physically, academically, philosophically, and spiritually with the, with the thematics, with the instruments, and with the environment, has allowed them to create sounds channeling the past itself, preserving memory and awakening memory, therefore awakening knowledge and understanding in people. Now, this is not a leap of faith, this is lo logic thinking as classical logic thinking. It is through emotions triggered by sounds that memory, therefore knowledge, is awakened. In a pre-Cartesian world, this would, have been made, this would have made perfect sense, as it is only from the 17th century that human knowledge was reduced to pure thinking and it was completely separated from feelings and emotions. Well, this type of thinking is no longer satisfactory. And it is interesting to know that current research on cognition rejects the separation of reason, feelings, and emotions. Following this logic and the emotionally charged responses of thousands of fans from all over the world, no matter the cultural background, language, religion, philosophy, gender, and age, we can indeed say that Vadruna, through their music, have become the channel of not only Norwegian cultural heritage, but also the channel of a spiritual heritage, which, by definition, encompasses geographical, cultural, and historical boundaries, and which is relevant to each and every single person. Because, as said by himself, 
Roots are not just important because they are your roots, they are important because a tree without roots will fall. Thank you.